Hello, hello. Today's Manchester United news and transfer news includes Dan Ashworth's priority is revealed. Joshua Zerk's deal is sealed. United are looking at another striker. The door is not closed on Lenny Yoro. And these are just some of the stories we're going to discuss in today's video. So stay tuned for all of the details. Before we get into it, though, please smash a like on the video. And let's just jump straight into it. So um, obviously yesterday we got the the famous here we go for Joshua Zerksy. The reports coming out from last night were that he'd he's already flown to Manchester. He's been at Carrington. Apparently he's had his medical um, and we're just literally waiting for the official announcement. Eric Ten Hag is at Carrington with him as well. There's been videos and photos of doing the rounds on social media. If you've seen them regarding Joshua Zerksy, he was going to become our first summer signing and the first signing under Ineos. Um, just a couple more updates for you regarding that. So firstly, Romano confirmed that Joshua Zerksy will sign his Manchester United contract today and then he will go on holiday. Um, Samuel Luckers from the Manchester Evening News said United, Man United could announce an agreement to sign Joshua Zerksy as early as today. Joshua Zerksy will be available, so I will not be available to figure in Manchester United's first four pre-season matches, and it's unclear if he will link up with the squad for the South Car Carolina leg of their pre-season tour of the United States. That's a bit of a blow, but that was expected because obviously the Euros being on, and it is important that the players go away and get some rest. Um, so whether he'll actually go on the American tour or not remains to be seen. Hopefully we'll have some more updates and news on that going forward. But I mean, it'd be nice if they are. And I kind of think the whole purpose of getting these deals done early would be to get them on the tour of America. But again, we've got to be conscious of of allowing players to have that rest, which is important. You don't want play like a sign in a pickup injury. So um, I think it's a balance and act with that one. And then finally, Romano also said Joshua Zerksy deal sealed as expected, as Manchester United, uh, sorry, as Man, as Man United are now fully focused on Mateus De Litt. Negotiations underway with Bayern as five year deal with De Litt has already been agreed. So Romano kind of confirming what we've mentioned before, where now that we've got Zerksy done, he's had his medical, hopefully he's passed it. Um, we're just waiting for the official announcement. The announcement might even come by the time. You're watching this video, in which case, fantastic news. But now Romano also saying we're now switching straight to to Delit, which again, in my opinion, just shows the the kind of efficiency at Man United that we're not used to. Normally, we would dwell on this deal for a week or two and rinse it, and then maybe go for another deal. But United are like, nope, we're still negotiating with other targets, which is which is massively exciting and shows the the kind of change that Ineos are implementing at United. The Xerxes deal, for, in case you missed it, is for £34.8 million. Pounds. Now, that those payments, so we paid a little bit more than this release clause um, in order for us to spread those deals out over a three-year period, which, again, is a smart move by Ineos because it effectively gives us more of a transfer budget this summer um, to, to get more players in which is a good good bit of business, I think, from Ineos. Will definitely help with our budget this summer. He's expected to sign a five-year contract and predicted he'll get the number nine shirt that's recently been vacated by Anthony Martial. Smash a like on the video if you're excited to, to be watching Joshua Zerksy play at Old Trafford next season. Now, he's not the only striker that we're being linked to. So I brought you news before from, from the Athletics saying that United may still go in the market for another striker. And the two names linked were Ivan Tony and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And again, another credible outlet in um, James Ducker from the, from the Telegraph has come out confirming that with Mason Greenwood expected to join Marseille in a £26.6 million deal, Manchester United have not ruled out the possibility of bringing in another striker before the transfer window closes. Ivan Tony is one player United are keeping tabs on. So that's two fairly reliable sources over the last few days, um, suggesting that Manchester United might not be done in the striker department after Xerxes, which for me makes sense because I know there's a lot of stories about change in formation, which could happen. We could be looking to play a different um, formation next season. Who knows? We'll, we'll obviously know more as the pre-season tour goes on. But also, I do think we need three strikers because, let's say, Hoyland gets injured for like three weeks. Xerxes is going to have to play all of those games, but then 
you you run the risk of fatigue, you run the risk of increasing Xerxes' chance of getting an injury, and then you've got no other option to bring off on the bench. So I actually kind of champion the fact that we might still be looking at another striker. Whether we're going to have the funds available or not is remains to be seen. And also whether we'll have the funds for Ivan Tony, who Brentford still want about 50 or 60 million pounds for, even though he's only got a year left on his contract, again, remains to be seen. Um, but interesting development though, because that's two reliable sources that have come out confirming that we may still be in for another striker and that's the second time Ivan Tony's name's been linked um, by those credible sources. Could though also be agent talk where um, agents or even Brentford are releasing stories about United's interest in Tony as a way to generate interest or increase the fees that are currently being offered by other clubs. We do need to take that into consideration as well, but it's definitely one to keep an eye on. I'll obviously bring you any news or updates if they develop. Um, so make sure you subscribe for all the latest Man United news. Now, keeping with incomings, obviously um, one of the other players that we have had a bid, well, we've made a bid and that bid has been accepted for is Lenny Yoro. And there's been a couple of interesting stories coming out regarding him today. So the first one from Fabrizio Romano saying that over this week, contact took place between Real Madrid and Lenny Yoro's entourage. Madrid confirmed once again that Yoro is a top target for them um, and part of their plans, Madrid also know that Manchester United are waiting for Euro's decision. So the the way things are at the moment is we've made the bid for Euro. His preference is still to go to Madrid. Madrid is still lurking, but Lille have accepted our offer and are pushing Euro to accept that offer as, as well. And we're just waiting for the player's decision. Now, the next update I wanted to bring you was fr um, coming from Sky Sports. Well, they were saying that Manchester United are not ready to give up on the Lenny Euro on Lenny Euro, despite his preference being a move to Real Madrid. Lille would prefer for Euro to move to Old Trafford as United have, have met their forty two million pound asking price, whereas Real Madrid are yet to match the, the offer. The door has not yet been closed on Manchester United, and I was thinking about this before that um, like surely we've had some kind of encouragement from Euro or his agent if we've made an official bid to Lille? Because generally speaking, you're not going to make an official bid for a player if you know full well he doesn't want to come. Like that's, well, under previous regimes we might have done. Um, but it seems a bit odd that, that United would go that far to make the deal, accept it if they'd had a flat outright no from Lenny Yoro. I, I, I can kind of think, so, so the more this is going on, the more I'm thinking, actually, is there something in it? And is there a possibility that Euro may accept our offer? Apparently, he's being put under a lot of pressure from Lille because they would prefer him to, to go to the highest bidder, which is currently us. Um, so it's interesting either way. Let me know what you think about Euro. I'm still of the opinion he's going to go to Madrid. Either, either he's going to reject our offer and then wait until the end of the transfer window, which is what Madrid wants, so that they can get him for a lower price or potentially run his contract down and go to go to Real Madrid. So personally, while there's a little bit of optimism in me somewhere that kind of thinks, well, actually, the longer this goes on, we must have had some sort of encouragement to, to make the bid anyway. Um, I, I still think I still think he's, he's Real Madrid bound. If he kind of wants to go to Real Madrid, very few players turn down the opportunity to go to Real Madrid, let's be honest. Sky also confirmed, though, that United are working on three centre-back deals. Obviously, Delit we mentioned before, Euro and Branthwaite is the other one. Um, obviously, we do need a Varane replacement, so a direct replacement for Varane, so we definitely need to bring in a centre-half. Sky were also kind of saying that um, we then may bring in another one if Maguire or Lindelof leave, but personally... I can't see why we wouldn't let both of those leave and get all three if we can. Obviously, Yoro's looking unlikely. Branthwaite, I think they'll wait and see what happens with Yoro and then potentially go back in. And we may end up paying a little bit more to get Branthwaite if we don't get Yoro. That could be likely as well. But let me know what you think about the, the Yoro situation in the comments. Now, keeping with incoming players, Man United have been linked over the last couple of days with Danny Olmo and Xavi Simmons. So we'll start with Danny Omo first. So this came from Ben Jacobs saying that United are, are named amongst ones to watch for RB Leipzig's Danny Omo, along with Bayern and Barcelona. Omo's 60 million euro release clause now expires on July the 20th. 
with Man City and Chelsea both ruled out of the out of the move. Um, that was confirmed by Romano as well. So the situation with Omo is he's obviously got a release clause which was due to expire on the fifteenth, but because of his um, him get that Spain getting to the final the the um, the Euros, then that's been extended now. So the deadline is now the twentieth of July. So if teams want to go and get Danny Omo for his release clause, sixty million euros, they've got until the twentieth to pay that fee. Um, Talk Sports, Alex Crook, though, did come out and say that he's been told Man United are not in the market for Danny, Danny Omo, contrary to reports. Personally, I kind of think Ben Jacobs is a little bit more credible than Talk Sport, being honest with you. Not that I'm saying that that story is true either, but out of the two, me personally, I would kind of maybe be more inclined to, to believe Ben Jacobs over Talk Sport, um, being perfectly honest with you. And then the last story came from um, Tom Barkley, which is from The Sun, which we do need to take with a pinch of salt. But they're saying that Manchester United are lining up a shock move for Xavi Simmons. He faces a big decision over his future now with United in the race with Bayern. So let's break down down those stories. So firstly, I'll I'll kind of start with Xavi Simmons. So firstly, you need to take that story with a pinch of salt because it's coming from The Sun. But we have had more reliable sources in the past linking us with him. And there's no smoke without fire. We actually had a bid rejected for him last summer, if you remember. So he is definitely a player of interest. Um, Bayern are considered the front runners at the moment, though. But United are also in talks with PSG around several players, according to Fabrizio Romano. And Simmons could possibly be one of those players. The rumour is with that is that... um, it might be a, a loan with an option or an obligation to buy next summer, which I don't think would be a particularly bad bit of business considering the financial restraints this summer. Plus, it gives you the opportunity to see what he's all about. And if he if he has an Anthony season, then you don't you don't have to sign him. But if he has a has a really good season, then you've got that kind of security that actually, yet yeah, we will sign him on a permanent deal. Um, Danny Olmo, on the other hand. For me, that would be more of a Bruno replacement, um, which is interesting because obviously we've had a lot of stories this summer linking Bruno with potentially leaving United. Um, And there's no smoke without fire. His agent's been actively speaking to other clubs around his future, and there's heavy links with the Saudi Pro League as well in, in terms of Bruno. And as we've mentioned before, and as some of you have commented on the videos, he does only have two years left on his contract. Um... So big decision needs to be made regarding Bruno Fernandes. And I would see Danny Omo more as a replacement for Bruno. Xavi Simmons could be considered that way as well, although I think he he can play a little bit more on the wing. So you could get Simmons and Bruno because you could play Simmons left or right wing with Garnacho or Rashford on the other flanks. Whereas I kind of see Danny Omo more as a, a central player. Um, personally, he can play on the flanks, but I don't necessarily think he's at his best there. Um so it'll be interesting to see how those stories develop. Obviously, as I mentioned, Ben Jacobs is quite a reliable source, so um, definitely ones to keep an eye on. Let me know what you think about those in the comments, though. Would you and, and do you think that if we got rid of Bruno, Danny Omo would be an adequate replacement? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Um, and just quickly, without going, so Mason Greenwood. There's been a few more stories regarding Greenwood today. One saying that um, from Fabrizio Romano saying Marseille are hoping to receive Mason Greenwood's green light on their contract offer soon. They already have Greenwood's green light on their project. However, Sky Sports were saying Lazio is still working on a deal to sign Mason Greenwood, um, but they are not yet to match Marseille's £26.6 million offer to Manchester United. And then um, an unknown Italian journalist, I don't know the credibility of this last one, saying that Napoli are closing in on the signing of Mason Greenwood. Um, so still potentially three clubs in the race. Marseille are, are the more heavily linked team with him. But it's nice that we've got interest as well. It, it, I, I think I can see him go to Marseille unless anything crazy happens because everything's been agreed with the club. They're the furthest ahead um, unless one of the other teams swoop in and potentially offer more, which would be good for us. It looks like obviously uh, Mason Greenwood is going to be leaving, leaving soon and keeping with outgoings. We've had some stories regarding Casemiro. So again, Fabrizio Romano saying that El Etihad and other Saudi Pro League clubs are interested in signing Casemiro. This um, latest report comes from the Manchester Evening News, but it's actually a report from Lequip where they're saying Manchester United midfielder Casemiro has opened talks with Saudi Pro League side El Etihad over a potential move to the club, according to Lequip, the Brazilian who joined United from Madrid for £60 million in August 2022 endured a difficult 23-24 campaign 
and it's been linked with the move away this summer. It's now being reported that Casemiro is, is in negotiations with, uh, with El Atihad, who finished fifth last season ahead of a bit, ahead of potentially making the switch to the Middle East. So I think we're going to potentially hear a lot more stories or a lot more players are going to be going to the Saudi Pro League soon because their budget allocation has been distributed or announced or um, clubs have been told basically how much money they have to spend. Um, it's weird in the Saudi Pro League where they have like a centralised pot of money that gets distributed towards all the teams and then they can go out and buy obviously players within that budget and that's kind of been happening this week. So we might see a little bit more movement, um, not just with Casemiro, but other players around the world going to go into the Saudi Pro League with the millions that they've got. And then the final two stories I've got quickly for you. So firstly, um, Toby Collier. So I thought this was interesting. Erickson Hag insisted on attending Toby Collier's signing ceremony as he agreed a new contract with the club. Eric Ten Hag really likes Collier, whose personality and professionalism have impressed staff at United. And I was speaking to my brother-in-law the other day about Toby Collier, where, um, for those of you who noticed, Eric Ten Hag was having kind of serious words with him at the FA Cup final win over City in a similar way to what he did with Maynu the the season before when we lost to City. Um, Eric Ten Hag was in heavy conversation or seen, seen speaking with um, Kobe Maynu. The rumours are that that conversation was around, look, next season, make sure you're on the pitch, make sure we win. And he was having that kind of conversation with Maynu after the final that season. And he was doing exactly the same with Toby Collier after the FA Cup final win against City. I think he could be one to watch this uh, this this season. You know, I think um, obviously it depends on how he goes in pre-season, but he's definitely a name that I think Ten Hag rates and he could be the next one that they try to develop coming through the youth team this season. Massively exciting as well that he signed a new contract because he is really highly regarded at the club. And then the final news story for you is regarding our star boys. So Dan Ashworth has made a new contract for Kobe Maynard, a priority for Manchester United. Ashworth is hoping to accelerate talks over Maynard's extension once the player returns from the Euros. That's come from a credible source. It's not the first time we've heard that as well. I'm massively excited that the, the Talk is that that um, Maynard's going to get offered a new contract once he comes back from the Euro, which I am absolutely buzzing about. I think Kobe Maynu is absolutely top class already. For somebody as, of his, at his age to have the season and the breakthrough that he's had, not just for United, but also to now be playing potentially in a Euro final for your country at 18 years old, can't be sniffed that. He is an unbelievable talent. Massively excited for him to be getting a new contract and securing his future at the club. I think he could go on to be, I think he could go on to be a legacy player at United. Somebody that we talk about in the future in the same way that we would with Giggs and Skulls and Neville's and Beckham's and players like that as well. I, I think he's that good. He's 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 an unbelievable player in my opinion. So smash a like on the video if you're excited to see Kobe Mainu get a, get a new contract and secure his. His, his future at United. And that's all for today's Man United news and transfer updates. Don't forget to share your comments below on all the stories discussed today. I do enjoy reading them. Smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will see you in the next one.